<laughs> Either way, okay, so this is a good time to go over something that we didn't quite get to last time in class. So hopefully you read about this in your textbook as you're reading. Let me just write it on the board as a reminder. It's something called Malus's Law. I'm not sure if this S is supposed to be there. So in terms of formulas, you would see the intensity transmitted is equal to some incident intensity times cosine of, oops, cosine of some kind of angle squared. Now, that's the formula you will see in the textbook. But you need to, under, you need to understand what, like, what this means, what kind of situation it's talking about. So it deals with the polarized light. Suppose that um, polarized lights are a little bit Difficult to draw, I'll do my best. Uh, let me just draw a beam path first. So let's say I have a beam that's going from left to right. Imagine a laser beam. And let's say it starts out unpolarized. So at the very starting place here, it's uh, unpolarized. So that would be like this light here. You saw with the demonstration last class, this slide is unpolarized. And what I can do is I can place a polarizing filter in the path of the light beam to polarize it. Can you see that it's polarized? Really? Does it feel like it has any sense of direction? Not really, it's a dimmer. But our eyes are not sensitive to light polarization. I hear bees' eyes are, anyways, our eyes are not. So we can't really see whether the a light is polarized or not. So, all right, so you place a first polarizer here. Let me just uh, illustrate that with this. Um, so I have a polarizer here. I'm just going to draw a circle. And let me just uh, draw some um, line to indicate the direction of the polarizing axis. So let's say that the, uh, the this is the direction of the polarizing axis. So this might be first angle theta 1 um, of the polarizing filter. So uh, I don't know what <laughs> direction this is. So uh, if this is at, say, angle like this, that would be being at angle theta 1. Okay? And uh, in terms of what you see here, it, uh, it, it doesn't depend on the angle. The intensity that you see being transmitted, it doesn't depend on angle. So this theta here, it doesn't refer to this angle theta one yet. Um, now, what you will find is that you get some dependence on the direction when you have two of these, one after the other. So let me just put one of them down here to provide a, a source of polarized light. And when I put the second polarizer in, now depending on its orientation, the intensity changes. So this is the orientation where you have maximum intensity. This is the orientation where you have minimum intensity. And um, I guess I can kind of uh, draw the situation. So let's say I have a um, second polarizer here. Then um, let's say it's oriented at some angle here and call this angle theta 2. And what this theta here refers to is the angle between these two polarizers. So this angle here should be theta 2 minus theta 1. Or it can be theta 1 minus theta 2. It doesn't matter either way. Yeah. And so this is what you see experimentally. When you have two polarizers and you know the direction of you know, polarizing axis somehow, then experimentally what you would find is that the transmitted intensity goes as cosine of this angle squared. So what you see is, uh, or what you would guess is that when you see that you have maximum or almost the entire intensity transmitted, you would say that, all right, the uh, theta is zero at this angle. So at what angle do you expect to get minimum in intensity transmitted? 90 degrees. So when I turn this 90 degrees, yeah, did you see that? What if when this is turned to 180 degrees? 
Yeah, 100% again, because minus 1 squared is 1. And so it repeats the pattern. And at 270 degrees, the minimum again, and so on. So, so that's what you see experimentally. And we will deal with the polarization a little bit more later before we do the polarization lab. But this is the, um, and this is the mental picture that will be helpful for you to actually answer that question. The way the polarization happens, you think of it as each of these polarizers taking a projection of the electric field vector of the light that's coming in. So for this very first polarizer, the easiest way to visualize the light that's coming in, imagine it as being polarized in two orthogonal directions and two perpendicular directions and there's equal amount of intensity in both of these modes. That's uh, why it's unpolarized. There's equal amount uh, uh, polarized this way, equal amount polarized this way. As this slide is incident on this polarizer, compare between these two modes, the only light that will get transmitted is the light that's polarized the correct way. So after this polarizer, only this light will get transmitted so, um, so that you lose the intensity by half. You might have read that somewhere in your textbook. Yes? Um, but I think it's ambiguous because when we say a light is unpolarized, the situation can be as complicated as it was. Like uh, the direction of the electric field can be as complicated as it should be. So uh, as, I said, as I said, as I said, as I said, as I said, you can imagine it as this way. I didn't say that's what it actually is. Unpolarized light is, so laser light is polarized. So I can demo, I, actually I haven't tested it. Uh, laser light is, pol well, it's a little bit polarized, not good to demonstrate. So I, that's a complicated detail that I don't want to go into. So what the real picture here is, it's a distinction between spontaneous emission and stimulated emission. And I don't want to address this until we get to quantum mechanics and lasers. What I'm telling you is that you can imagine it as being this. Yeah. And the, the result that you need right now is that when an unpolarized light goes through a polarizer, it loses half the intensity, and now it is polarized. So once you have this polarized light, then once again, this is what I want you to remember. Each polarizer takes projection of this electric field vector and only lets the component of electric field that's aligned in the correct direction. So, so let me finish the rest of the diagram here. So this is at angle theta 1. And this axis here, let me draw it with different color. So this is the axis that's at angle this is the angle theta 2. And mathematically, the way I would want to represent that electric field vector is, um, this is, so this is, my, this is my entire electric field vector E. And I can think of that being broken down into the component along the axis, component parallel, and component that's uh, perpendicular to the axis. And the property of this polarizer, whatever the underlying mechanism is, is such that only the component that's in the correct direction passes through. So you can, you know, based on this diagram here, you can figure out the magnitude of the electric field. The magnitude of the electric field is, well, the hypotenuse times its adjacent cosine times the, this angle here. So cosine theta 2 minus theta 1. So that's the relationship for electric field. Now you might wonder, where's the square? Um, when you look at this, the, I see a square here. I don't see a square here. And this is a little bit about the uh, relationship between intensity of light an electric field that you should have gotten from physics 4B. But if not, um, this is the thing that I can just tell you, and if you accept it as being true, um, we can just move on. Intensity of light is proportional to the electric field squared. 
you might remember the pointing vector. Uh, pointing vector, uh, which was um, E cross B over mu naught, and magnetic field was related to the electric field. So you express this in terms of electric field alone. You, this is um, proportional to electric field squared. But this is the relationship. So based on this underlying picture involving electric field, you get this relationship for intensity. So understanding this uh, background information is important for reasoning this through. Because uh, it's, um, um, unless you have correct mental image, it's hard to miss it. So it's saying three polar sheets are placed together so that transmission axis of the, let me draw them. So I have three polarizing sheets. So let me draw them this way. Uh, so light is being light is being transmitted this way, just down and up. So this is the first, second, and the third. And initially, this is unpolarized. And it says transmission. Okay, it doesn't tell me what direction the first one is, so I will just uh, set a direction. I'll just set a direction, yeah. So this is going to be the direction of the first polarizing sheet. So the second polarizing sheet will be at the angle of 40 degrees. And the third one, it's uh, being compared to the first two sheet, so that'll make it easier for me. So the third one is at this angle. Um, 80 degrees, is it easier? I'm not sure if it's actually easier. So you go through it step by step. This is something you will get used to doing in optics. You start from the starting point, and as you're going through the first polarizer, you don't worry about what's going on with the second and third. So after the first polarizer, at this point here, you will have a light that's polarized horizontally along the direction of the first polarizer. At um, eventually, they are asking for intensity, right? So light at uh, one half intensity. That's uh, what we talked about here. When an unpolarized light goes through a polarizer, it loses half the intensity because the model you are thinking of is unpolarized light has equal parts of horizontally polarized and vertically polarized light. I mean, real picture is a little bit more complicated, but for this calculation, that's good enough for now. So as this light goes through this, after it goes through the second polarizer, the, when you look at the light at that point, it is going to be polarized at 45 degrees. It'll be polarized at 45 degrees. And because you have to take a component of this along this axis, it's going to lose some intensity. So it'll be at a cosine of 40 degrees squared from previous. Right? So far, so good. Uh, it's the third step where people might make mistakes. So because the mistake you might make is you might want to compare this to this. No, the, at this step, light is already polarized in this direction. You want to take the component of this light, this electric field, along this axis. So for this, after this third polarizer, you will see a light that is polarized, um, that is polarized at 80 degrees. But for the purpose of how much intensity gets through, the direction you want to compare it to is the, the, the state of light you want to compare it to is actually this one. The light coming in was, um, was polarized at, oh, I want to draw this right. Uh, it was polarized at 40 degrees. And the light that gets through is the component that's uh, parallel to this and the component that's perpendicular here. This is the one that gets blocked. So when you're looking at, so the amount, the, in terms of the intensity lost, it's uh, 
as some cosine squared of some angle from previous. And this ang that angle should be not 80 degrees, but 80 minus 40 degrees. This should be 80 minus 40 degrees. So when you construct your answer from having gone through this analysis, what you should get is um, the ratio of the incident intensity to the, sorry, ratio of the transmitted intensity because the fraction of intensity, yeah. So ratio of the transmitted intensity to incident intensity will be, I lost one half in the first polarizer, one half times, I lose this much on the second polarizer, cosine squared 40 degrees, and I lose this much again on the third polarizer. So that should be answer, unless I made a coding error, hopefully that is the answer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, so when the polarization will come back again, we didn't quite cover it in detail last time uh, because we ran out of time. And uh, I think this is mostly at the level at which we'll cover polarization. There's something called the birefringence, which is super fun. If you work in the field that I used to, something called the atomic molecular and optical physics, you get to deal a lot with it. But we have a lot of other things to cover in this class other than polarization of light. But it's an entire field of study if you do physics research. <laughs>